Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to morning prayer on this, the 30th of January. And it is good to be with, with you, my brothers and sisters. And I would like you, if you have a candle handy, and we light our candle for global peace and into spiritual unity and for the needs of all here present. We light this light in the name of our beloved Father, Mother God, who creates life and in the name of the risen cosmic Christ, who loves life, in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire of life, in the name of Gaia, our beloved Earth Mother, for she nurtures the divine in all life. In the name of all faith traditions and none, who are the children of God, our brothers and our sisters, we remember them. And in the name of spiritual diversity, on behalf of all my brothers and sisters of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans, I welcome you to this table of love. We begin our morning prayer with the prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. And we say we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure, and saving teachings, reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Thursday morning, we commune with the angel of water, saying, Angel of water, enter my blood, and give the water of life to my whole body. As you say this, you contemplate the waters of earth in rain, rivers, lakes, seas, or anywhere, and the currents of the angel of water are left intensifying and directing the circulation of the blood. Let us just for a moment reflect on our heart. Let us reflect on why we are here as brothers and sisters of the light who hold the light of the divine within us. And because we are ascending from third through to fifth dimensional energy, even to sixth dimensional energy, we come into the presence of the Cosmic Christ and the Father Mother God. Let us be still just for a moment as we take a deep breath and breathe in the very breath of the divine oneness who created you and me and formed us in our mother's womb. Let us be still and let us sense the inner heartbeat with our heartbeat. It is the heartbeat of the beloved who's calling us to praise, calling us to celebrate our divinity as co-creators of the divine, vortexes of light. Let us breathe in the breath of God Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Be still. Be still in the presence of all that is sacred. Rejoice is a favorite word of the psalmist. David's unceasing troubles could never dim his joy in God. Over and over he cries out, Rejoice, 
sing, shout for joy. Mercy is another favorite word. It occurs hundreds of times. David often spoke of the justice, righteousness, and wrath of God. But God's mercy was the thing in which he gloried. In Psalm 51, David acknowledges his sin, which is probably the aftermath of his sin with Bathsheba. He pours out his soul to God in a prayer for mercy and grace. He had such a deep sense of his sin that he was continually thinking of it with sorrow and shame. He writes, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. You are just when you pass sentence on me, blameless when you give judgment. Further on he writes, Yet since you love sincerity of heart, teach me the secrets of wisdom. Purify me with hyssop until I am clean. Wash me until I am whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your spirit. David now saw more than ever what an unclean heart he had, and sadly laments it. But he sees it is not in his own power to amend it, and therefore begs that God would create in him a clean heart. He knew he had by his sin grieved the Holy Spirit, and provoked him to withdraw. He dreads this more than anything. He prays, I am ready to fall either into sin or into despair, Therefore uphold me with thy spirit. He had a broken and contrite heart, and sorrow for his sin. It is a heart that is tender, and God is graciously pleased to accept this. He places his confidence in the mercy of God. He is a sinner, but he loves God with all his heart, and he knows that God loves him despite his sins. The greatest sin of all must be despair. Like David, we must always place all our hope and trust in the merciful love of God. I would like to read to you, if I may, 
a section from entering the castle which moved my heart last weekend when I was supporting Sister Jan and Sister Elaine as part of their training as tertiary oblates. And it really, really gripped my heart. And I was guided to share it with you in love. You never know how God is going to get you. How true. What is God asking of you? What is your soul calling you to do or to be in your life now? What purpose is your life journey? When you enter the castle, your soul, you will find some answers. Seeing your soul as a castle and yourself as a mystic is like having a new lens through which to look at your life. You can see more clearly, notice the shapes of events and patterns more sharply. You don't want to use an old paradigm or an old pair of glasses to find a new path for your soul. And you don't want to use a new pair of glasses in the wrong way. What are those words saying to your heart? You never know how God is going to get you. Well, I know how he got me as a 16-year-old boy in Dublin, training in hotel management from the age of 13. And then suddenly my girlfriend and I, we went to see the nun's story. Oh yes. And I fell in love with Audrey Hepburn, not with my girlfriend. But there was a calling in my heart that resonated to be a missionary in Africa. Oh yes. And then I was guided to enter monastic life and to be trained as a nursing monk and I thought all was well but it wasn't because eight years later I realized that I couldn't cope with the lack of charity and the loneliness of the lack of community. I get more sense of belonging as a member of our cyber community of interfaith Franciscans because the love is unconditional, not conditional. And then through mental illness, a breakdown through Prozac, where I was introduced to my new friend, bipolar. And through that journey, I guess you could say, my life like yours has been turned inside out, upside down. And it's taken me best part of 14 years to try and come to terms with the dynamics. But what a prayer and what a gift God has given to my heart. So yes, what is God asking of you today? Well, I think he's asking you to be happy. He's asking you to honor who you are. He's asking you to be free, to be free of guilt and fear and negativity and to embrace your inner divinity as a child of God, a child of the goddess, a child of love, and watching our dear Jan on Monday evening in our interview was truly, truly music to my soul, for she spoke honestly and humbly about her journey. And what a journey! And you too are on a journey, but sometimes we run away, we run away. And interestingly, I was guided to read this too. The grass isn't greener. Encourage and help each other. Mika Monda Campbell writes, 
what a name, Mika Munda, Campbell. Have you ever secretly compared your spouse to another man or woman? Or wish they were more thoughtful, more spiritual, a better dresser? If you have, let me reassure you the grass isn't greener on the other side. The man doesn't clip his toenails either, and that woman doesn't rub her husband's feet while feeding him grapes. Our spouses are the people we fell in love with, and often they just need a little encouragement. Instead of comparing and complaining, nurture your mate in the areas they need most. I heard about a good-looking millionaire who married a plain-looking woman. It was the talk of the town, I bet. Why did he marry her? She's not up to his standard. It won't last. And when they came back from an extended honeymoon, it looked like the millionaire was with another woman, one glowing with confidence and poise. Now that's the kind of wife he deserves, declared the town loudmouth. Then she noticed something interesting. It was the same woman, completely transformed. Her new husband had taken her away, encouraged her, and built up her self-confidence till she started to see in herself what he'd always seen. So instead of walking around on your neighbor's grass, fertilize your own by looking for the good in your spouse. Speak encouraging words acknowledge their efforts to improve, become their cheerleader, their cheerleader, sorry. The Bible says love protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Instead of making comparisons, ask God to help you see your partner like you once did. And for those of us who've embraced the monastic life, our partner is our beloved, the Cosmic Christ, who allows us to share, to share our love with those whom he brings to our life as a soulmate, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So let us now reflect Reflect on our journey and let us come before the beloved, the Father, Mother, God and Gaia and all of the Ascended Masters and the Divine Feminine Aspect of God. Let us present ourselves as a child of love. But if there is anything hurting within us, let us name it. Let us bless it and let us release it to God. Stand back and say thank you. We come now to our morning intercessions and here I invite you to share any requests that may be on your heart and together as a loving family we will hold all in prayer. This morning I pray for you who've joined me. I ask the Father, Mother, God to touch your heart and to show you your life's purpose and give you the courage to embrace it well. I pray for all my brothers and sisters of the Teo community and I pray especially for those who are hurting today for Sister Diane in Lee, who's got advanced MS. She's only young and she struggles so much 
and she sent me the most beautiful email. My trouble, my pain is nothing in comparison, but I thank God for the love, the unconditional love I receive from you, my brothers and sisters, and I pray with you and I pray for you. Let us pray for all who need healing, Jan's request, and for myself. Thank you, Jan. I pray for Miriam in New Zealand, who's offered to do our Wednesday night midnight soiree. Thank you for that. To Eleanor and Elizabeth, who will cover the other three nights. I pray for all our oblates in training, and I just ask the Father, Mother God, to reawaken within them the joy and the love of service. I pray for peace, for peace in this beautiful world that's full of God's love and beauty, but man's inhumanity to man is disheartening, but we do not engage with that drama. We send it love, we send it light, but we pray for the refugees, the Syrian refugees, the young women and girls and children who are being exploited and who are living in horrendous conditions. We pray for an end to violence in the world for a resurrection of light within all hearts, that we condemn no one, but send them love. So let us gather all our thoughts as we pray the beautiful prayer that Jesus the Cosmic Christ left us. Our Father, Mother, God Supreme, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us this day the strength to endure what seems impossible. Give to us your love so that we will share that love and forgive us our foibles, our moans and groans Lead us not astray, but deliver us from the clutches of negativity and allow us to be a vortex of love, of light and healing. Amen. Let us pray. In your presence, O God, we come helpless and defenseless, but we come as a child of God. I ask your blessing on all here present and I thank you from my heart for touching the lives of those here and filling them with your love. Amen. Namaste. Shalom. Inshallah. Paxet bonum. Om Shanti. Solo de Caritas. Salam kum laikum, and may the peace of your God enrich your heart and fill you with the abundance of God's love. Take care and God bless you.